Hey there, my name is Spencer Stark. I'm the designer of Alice is Missing, and today I'm going to show you how to run your players through character creation and game setup before you begin your session of Alice is Missing. I do want to know if you haven't watched the previous video about how to set up Roll20 before your players get into the system, make sure you go and, and watch that first and do all of that because this is going to build on that video. So uh, assuming that you've done all of that and you have gotten your players all set up and everybody's done their prep and you've done your background questions and um, all those kinds of things, we're we're going to land in, in this screen when you first start. Now you want to make sure that before your players arrive, you have this little player marker here on the introduction page. That way they're all seeing this introduction screen when they load up Roll20 and they won't have access to this page sort of document up here. This, uh, what is this called? The page toolbar. They won't have access to that. You're the only one who's going to be able to see all these pages. So you're going to be guiding them through setup as you go. You're also going to want to get all of your players into some sort of video uh, or audio hangout. So we aren't going to use Roll20 for that um, because there's already a lot happening there and I want to make sure that we're not putting too much of a load on Roll20 during this. You can use, you know, Google Meet or you can use Zoom or you can use Discord, whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever your group wants to use. But make sure you're all sort of on that platform together so that you're able to talk to each other and you're able to uh, see each other if that's something that you want to do. That being said, once you have up some sort of video hangout that you're using and you have Roll20 up and all of your players are in both of those places, um, we are going to move everybody through setup here. Our goal during this section as the facilitator is to be as efficient as possible. One of the most, most, most important things is that you keep the setup of the game as compressed as you can because there's an emotional sort of engagement that has to happen during the game and the longer that setup goes on the less emotional engagement you're going to get from your players so what i do is i usually open up my phone and i have a little timer running uh, and i try and get everything to happen within an hour. How do we make that the quickest it can be? Well, that's why we did set up before and laid everything out. Um, but when players arrive, you'll bring them to this screen. You'll take the introduction card um, by right clicking and choosing take card. And then you will read this aloud for them. You'll see it'll pop up here and it says pull a missing person poster. Um, we've already done that. So after you get done reading all this, you'll direct their attention to this poster here. Let them know that they've already seen this, but that this is the poster that all the kids were huddling around and this is our Alice. After that, you're gonna switch them over to the character creation screen. Now notice when I go up here to the page toolbar, um, I need to grab this red player bar and bring it over to character creation uh, and then click on this. Oh, and in case you missed how I brought the cards up once they're in my hand, there's a little one next to this card here. It means I have one of that type of card in my hand. I can click on that. It'll pull up my cards. I'm gonna sort by deck. Make sure you're sorting by deck and make sure you're your players, once they start taking cards, are also sorting by deck. It'll just make it easier. And then you can click on that card and it'll pull it up nice and big like you saw. And that's going to be a main mechanic in the game to be able to read these cards. So just know that that's, that's sort of how you do that. And then you can always grab this card and drop it back or, you know, do whatever. But um, most of the time you're going to, you're going to be keeping these cards in your hand. So we'll take that back. Okay, so something else I was going to say is that I would also recommend doing this dry run through that I'm doing right now with yourself <laughs> before you have players join just to make sure that you know how all of this goes because you're going to have players come in and, and they're going to be confused about what to do. So yeah, so running through it yourself, practicing what you're going to say, doing your GM prep for this game is very much like practicing how you're going to get players through this setup quickly and into the actual gameplay itself. So you're gonna have everybody grab their character. So uh, for me, playing Charlie Barnes, I'm gonna right click here and hit take card, and then right click here and hit take card. You're gonna have to guide them through that because they're probably not gonna know how to take cards. So you just teach them to right click and take card and it'll pull it into their hand. And now you see that I have three cards down here. Um, I have my intro card, my character card, and motive card. And we're actually gonna jump over to a section that I, uh, have open right here, which is the journal section. This journal section, if you flip that open, you'll see that it has the character's names listed here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on your character and it should pop up, it'll probably pop up bio and info first because that's the default. But you can click to character sheet and have all your players click to character sheet. And you'll see that there's a section to write your secret and about your character and about all the other characters and about all the locations and suspects we're gonna talk about too. So all the players should be recording the information, especially the information that pertains 
pertains to their character um, should be recording that in this sheet so make sure that's the first thing once you get to character creation and everybody has taken their card make sure you pull up have them pull up this character sheet and show them where they can record all of this information okay so once they've done that uh we're going to exit out of that because we don't need it for now we're only going to use it to sort of record this stuff that we need as it happens and you're going to have everybody walk the other players through their their name their archetype and the answer to their background question remember to keep the secret answer to the secret secret for now it'll come out later but you're going to go starting with charlie and then moving around the table um very quickly just what your name is what your background is kind of what you look like who you imagine your character as just giving some some more details about about your character and if you read through the manual already which i would highly recommend you do reading through the facilitator guide you'll use that same sort of format to be able to do it here it's just um they'll already have come up with their background question so and they'll have already recorded their voicemail so yeah so so those things should come a lot quicker when you're sitting at the table people want to think about it but now it should just be sharing who your character is sharing your background sharing a little bit about themselves and that's it once everybody's chosen their character they have their character sheets they've recorded they start recording information about all the characters as they are talking about it the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign relationships so once everybody's introduced their character we go to relationships and there are two of them they're going to be assigned to two different characters so um you know dakota might have uh, charlie might give dakota i don't think you like me and might give jack i've always wanted you to be my friend so you'll start to assign these between characters and then record that information in your character sheet as well so you're like okay dakota uh, i don't think you like me so i'm gonna go to charlie and put dakota uh i don't think you like me um, great. And uh, and that will sort of be the information. You'll have all of the other information about Dakota here as well. But then, you know, that you could you could put in caps like relationship or something. And you'll sign those all across the table, just as the facilitator guide says. And then you'll be ready to move on. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to close this. Um, we're going to imagine everybody took their cards. Everybody has their cards in their hands. Um, and we're going to jump over to starting hunches. Uh, now, notice... Right now, the players aren't seeing starting hunches, only I am. So I need to grab the player marker and bring them along for the ride. So now they're here. Once we get to this section, you, you'll be following the facilitator's guide for starting hunches from the actual manual itself. You'll have people go around and choose uh, a car that they think is suspicious in Alice's disappearance. So, you know, the old barn or Clister Rivers Park or Mr. Halvert, um, and they'll take that into their hand and just remind them to right click and hit take card. So if I'm taking the lighthouse, I would take that card and then describe why that place is suspicious in Alice's disappearance. So again, once you've done all of that and you've recorded those on these locations and suspects sections, you'll be good with your starting hunches and we'll move through to the clues setup. Now, uh, again, we need to pull our player tab over so they follow us here. And this is going to be a really simple sort of dealing out. You're going to take the 90 card, take card, and then you'll just go around in a round robin. You know, Dakota might take 80, Jack, Jack might take 70, Evan might take 60, and then so on and so forth. Julia might take 50, and then you might take 45. And, and then you go around until all the cards have been taken and are in your hand. Now, this is where the sorting by deck becomes important because you don't want to look at the front of these cards before the timer that you're going to have open reaches the number on the back so you're going to want to stay sort of above above board with these and uh not not be looking at the text if you i mean if you kind of see it you can kind of see it here it's not really that big of a deal because you can't really read it but make sure you communicate to the players that these these clue cards should be like they are face down, right? Like they should act as though they are face down on the table in front of them. That's how those are designed to be played. Uh, you'll see I still have a location card here. I probably would have, um, I probably would also have, if I'm playing with five players, I probably also have a character in my hand as well. We're gonna, we're actually gonna pull those cards back and you'll see in the clue setup here, it says facilitator, sure to call and shuffle all suspect and location cards before continuing. So we're actually gonna do that now to show you how that works. So let me just go do that. Follow my own directions, right? That's good to do. So we'll go over to the, over to the, uh, what is it called again? The collection section. That's where all of our decks are. And we use these to set up the game. So we're going to open up suspects and locations. If, if you follow the directions from last time, these should already be open, uh, but I closed them to show you sort of how to open them again, if you forgot. Um, so you should have the suspects, locations, and the searching cards here. I'm just going to go recall and um, I'm going to check shuffle after recalling and I'm just going to hit recall uh sorry I'm going to hit recall all not just recall so that's going to take all the cards all the suspect cards and, and put them 
back in the deck. And you'll see the suspect card actually disappeared from here. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. Recall. I'm going to shuffle after recalling. Hit recall all. And you'll see the location card vanished from here. So now those are all back in these decks, which is good. And all these cards should be in your hand now. Uh, they'll be here. So I'll also take the 45 if I'm playing with five players. Uh, and you'll see the 90 and the 45 are on here. Now, sometimes people will forget what times they picked up. And that's where, again, the sorting by deck comes into handy because you can scroll down and see, okay, I took the 90 minute card. I took the 45 minute card. So once we've all got our clue cards, uh, this is when I usually give players a little bit of a break. And this is when I load in the voicemails. So I'm actually going to go record a voicemail really quick just so i can have something to show you okay so i record a voicemail and i'm going to show you how to load it into roll 20. um so the first thing you want to do is make sure you've received all the voicemails from your other players and if somebody had to re-record or something making sure they send that to you quickly so that you can load everything in so you'll jump over to what's called the jukebox and you'll hit manage audio and you'll go to tracks uh, there's two sections here there's playlists and tracks uh, you'll go to tracks and you'll hit uh click to upload. So you'll want to make sure that this is some sort of standard audio type of file that Roll20 will be able to read, like an MP3 or, um, you know, an AIF or something like that. If it's not, um, you can always convert it using QuickTime or VLC or just Google like convert to MP3 and you should be able to convert them pretty easily. Um, but most, most recording, you know, most like phone recording software will export it something that, that Roll20 can read. So I'm going to go ahead and just open this. Uh, by hitting open you'll see it'll upload here which is why we want to do it in the break because it'll take a minute pretty quick though uh, and then you'll see if we switch back from playlist to tracks it shows up here um, so we have the charlie voicemail uh, all of your voicemails should be uploaded this way so you should have them you know on a list of some sort uh, here whether it's in downloads or wherever um, and you'll open up that stuff and then they'll all load in here and then you can just go add to um, you should have a voicemails playlist. If for some reason it didn't load in with a voicemails playlist, you can always go up to here. I'm actually going to delete this new playlist. I don't know why that's in there. Um, but you, you'll be able to create a new playlist uh, called voicemails. Um, and I'm actually going to delete the one that's, that's down here because there's no need for it there. So I can go tracks and then I can go add to voicemails. Um, and then if I switch back, and I'll do that for all of the voicemails. So every single one I'll do that for. If for some reason I need to like delete a voicemail, if it didn't upload right, or there's some sort of change that needs to be made, you can always just click here and then hit delete. But for now, um, you're good. You can also rename it if you want to. You don't need to, but you can. Um, you'll create that. You'll add that to the voicemails list, and then you'll jump over to the playlist, and you should have all of your voicemails listed here in the voicemails playlist and you can just hit add to game so while everybody's off getting water going to the bathroom um, you'll make sure that that's all set up so that when they come back it's all ready to go if players send you their voicemails ahead of time you can always do this ahead of time as well okay so once you've had all the voicemails loaded in and you can see them here there's one more thing you need to do on the voicemail section which is click this over to play once um, it'll automatically be on shuffle which you don't want because it'll randomly choose some and it might choose the same one twice you want to make sure it's shifted over to one time playthrough. Uh, great. Once that's done, um, you'll sort of be on your way. You all have your clue cards. You know what times you're looking for on the timer. Um, you're going to switch over to the gameplay section and again, pull your players over with you. So you want to draw their attention to the 10 minute card here and remind them that this will be handed out during the game. Um, but then you also want to jump over to the 80 minute cards here and show them. Um, and drag one of these out onto the table because we're going to show an example. And this is in the facilitator's guide for the actual like physical version. But we do it here as well, especially because we're going to have to teach them how to pull location and suspect cards in Roll20. So we'll pull one of these 80 cards out and we'll flip card. Oh, notice if you right click, sometimes you can't get to stuff. You've got to bring it down here and flip card. And we're just going to make this nice and big so the players can read it. This says this person just posted a oh, reveal suspect card. This person just posted something suspicious involving Alice to their social media account. What do they post and why does it not sit right with you? So uh, you'll give players sort of an idea of the kind of, you know, thing they might see on a card, which is, is a very which this is a very standard thing that might pop up um, on one of the one of the clue cards um, and show them if they get a card like this in their hand. Um, uh, they're going to mouse over to the suspect cards here because it says reveal suspect card. Grab one. They'll see a little card pop up here. They'll grab that, pull it out, 
and then drop it into the suspect's drawn section over here. Um, make sure you note that they should not be taking it into their hand. Uh, if they take it into their hand, it can't be shuffled later. And then they'll use this card to be able to, you know, create the fiction. And, and that's sort of the way the, the game will play. And so what I do at this point is I go ahead and get rid of this and just ask everybody to start dragging suspects and locations uh, to these boxes just to kind of get a sense for how that works. So we'll grab another suspect and another location just so that they can see kind of how these things come out and how they lay in and they can practice doing that. And then also uh, I do it because um, uh, I have the players that are holding the 20 and 30 minute cards because those are cards where uh, the assignment is not to draw one of these cards, but instead is to shuffle these cards and draw one. I have them actually do that. So I run them through the, the process of shuffling and drawing one card and let them know that one of their clue cards is going to have them do that. So I have the person who has the 30 card, which is like the reveal the culprit card. I have them do the suspects. And then the person who has the 20 minute card, which is like the reveal Alice's location, uh, I have them do the location section. They'll just right click, have them right click and flip those cards over uh, like this. And don't do this for them. Let them do it so they can practice flipping cards and then have them shuffle them. Let them know this is what they will be doing when one of their clue cards says to shuffle all the cards that have come out. And then tell them to place them back into the boxes and then flip any one that they'd like. So most people will flip this one. Flip card. And it's the dripping dagger. Same thing here. We'll shuffle. We'll have them shuffle all these cards up. Place them back into the boxes at random. And then flip one of the cards. Again, they don't have to be perfectly placed in here. Uh, that's just what people tend to do, um, but just making sure they flip them. And make sure they flip them, not take them, because we want them to be open information. That has happened here, so it would be Dripping Dagger Nightclub, and it would be Mr. Halvert who was responsible in this case. Uh, so that is the way those will work. Um, and then you can just select these and delete them. And at that point, everybody should sort of have an idea of how the game plays. You want to make sure at this point that you, uh, you you can always go recall just to make sure you have everything. Shuffle after recalling and recall all. I always do that just to make sure in case somebody forgot to hand me a card or in case somebody, when they were sh when they were putting stuff out, they accidentally took one in their hand, that they don't have one anymore, that all the cards are available to draw. We'll hit recall. All. Okay, great. Uh, the last thing you want to draw people's attention to is the searching cards here. Those can just be drawn out. Uh, they'll go face up and then they can just right click and take that card into their hand. Players should be reminded that these cards are sort of like a, they're, they're oftentimes pretty dramatic. And so you don't want to be drawing a lot of these cards during the game. You want one or two to come out am amongst everybody the entire game. So yeah, so that's how that would work. And if they want to get rid of it, they can, they can just right click and delete. So the last thing you want to have players do is queue up the timer that they're going to use for the game. Now, the best way I've found to do this is to have them open it in a new window. So I already have it open right here. Um, uh, or not a new window rather, but a new tab. So I'm going to just have this be two tabs so they can switch easily between roll 20 and the timer. Now, luckily, most of the time that they are playing the game, they'll just need to be on the timer. Only when the timer hits the number on the back of their clue card do they need to come back to roll 20. So you might want to have them write down the numbers of the clue cards that they have just so that they can make sure that they have them on standby uh, before the game begins. Um, so that they know when the timer hits those numbers, they're to go back to roll 20. So I have them set up like this. Uh, and then um, and then if you have, you know, your, your video conferencing thing uh, sitting off to the side or something, uh, that's totally fine. But you won't be using the video conferencing while you're playing the game. So um, oftentimes what I do, and I'll kind of run you through it here so you see, but uh, I have everybody, you know, have this screen up by default, right? They're looking at this. They have their location and their suspect cards here, the searching cards available here. They have all of their, their, their uh, hand of cards down here, um, and they have their character sheets here. Uh, we'll pull this up, have them queue up the timer, um, and make sure it stays at 90. Have them pause it before it goes anywhere. This will probably be animated, hopefully, by the time that you're seeing this. Uh, it's very possible that that will be out by that time, which is exciting. So, um, so you have them pull that up in a different tab. That way, it's all ready. Um, and then you'll go through the game guide. The game guide's here. Uh, you'll be able to click on it, pull it up, read from it. I don't think we have the latest one updated here in while I'm recording this, so it might be slightly different. Um, uh, so I'm not going to click on it here and show you because it'll be you'll probably see something different. But just know you're going to open that game guide, go through each point, um, which will give you some good common 
ground to be on with your players before you begin. And the facilitator guide should go through all, all of that as well. You'll follow those exact same instructions um, to be able to do that. But yeah, that's that's sort of the last thing you'll do is go through the game guide. Once that's done and everybody is ready, what I found works best is that I pull up the video conferencing um, and I have everybody flip over to the YouTube link for the, um, for the timer. And then I tell them that we're about to start the game. Uh, if you haven't traded numbers already, you should be trading numbers as well, following the facilitator guide to do that, or using Discord or whatever you want to use, uh, which I, I might cover in a, a different video. Um, I will also have the app coming out at some point that will facilitate all of that too. But uh, but in the meantime, you know, just make sure you have all the numbers that you need, and that you, as Charlie Barnes, have created the the, the group chat, uh, and. And then you're going to have, hopefully you can see them all up in here. You might even make your screen smaller so that you can see, uh, you know, you can see all, all their faces too. Uh, and then what you'll do is you'll just tell them to get to the screen, uh, mute their audio, give you a thumbs up. When that's happened, that when everybody's muted, you'll tell them you're going to count down from three. You'll go three, two, one, play. On play, everybody's going to hit play and the, the timer will sync up for everybody. So when everybody's ready, you'll go three, two, one, play, and you'll hit play, and it will start to play. At that point, the game is on. You will be able to come back here and sort of see what's happening. Uh, you'll, you'll obviously come down and look at your 90 minute card here to see what it says, which it tells you how to send your first text message to everybody. Um, and you'll wait until the first song in the playlist ends. Um, and then you'll send the message and begin the game. So just get it all typed out and ready, ready to hit send. And then once that song ends, just hit send and go. And then the game will begin. You'll be able to keep track here of whether locations or suspects have come out at the times that they should be coming out, which is super useful because sometimes players miss cards and they'll be so caught up in in the conversation that they won't realize the 70 minute card has passed, uh, the 70 minutes on the timer has passed and the, they've missed their card. Um, and so, so you can see whether they've brought out a new suspect or location to be able to just ping that person and go, hey, did you flip your 70 minute card? Just to make sure that everybody is staying on track. So at that point, the whole game will play out via text message and you'll be able to keep track of everything here and see how things come out. And you also wanna make sure that the 10 minute card uh, goes to a player um, at the appropriate time. Uh, so you'll you know make sure that that 10 minute card, whoever is going to, to um, find Alice, that they take that 10 minute card. You'll wanna monitor who that goes to and make sure that it makes it to the right home so that the game plays out the way it's supposed to. Once everything's played out in that way, and the whole game has finished, right? At that point, you should have a couple of cards. Let's just pull them out. A couple of cards that have come out here. Um, and, oh, look, CJ came out twice. Uh, let's do a couple more of these. And then David came out twice. Jeez. We got two and two. Uh, okay, Callisto, and we'll do one more location. So your board should look something. Oh, wow, Lighthouse came out twice. That's a... A crazy amount. We'll flip all these because this is kind of what your end state will look like, right? You'll have a bunch of face down cards and one face up card, and this will be kind of it was CJ and the lighthouse is where she is. Great. Once that happens, the timer goes off, right? You'll want to be back at this screen so you can go to your jukebox and hit play on the voicemails, making sure this is uh, on one, not on shuffle, because if it's on shuffle, it won't do it right. You want to make sure it's on one and then you'll hit play and you'll hear all the voicemails start to play and so should everybody else. So you'll play through those voicemails and those will play for all the players and once those voicemails are done uh, you'll want to return to your uh, video conferencing. Have everybody turn on your video, turn on your audio um, and, and make sure everybody else does the same and then you'll move into the debrief stage. So to do that you'll come up to here to the page toolbar and you'll flip over to here, go to debrief and then You'll be able to just flip this card over and you can you can either take it into your hand or you can make it big sometimes i just make it big so everybody can read it and you'll just do and you'll just do the debrief with everybody as normal and and your game will be done so yeah that's kind of a brief overview of of how to do this you'll notice that uh that there's a lot to handle here it's a it's a big task uh, to set it up digitally and um, when you're at the table it's a lot easier because you're just handing out cards and shuffling things and, and here you're having to teach people how to actually use the the interface as well as how to play the game so um, so practice this a couple times by yourself make sure that you are prepared when people come in that you're gonna be able to move them along um, know there's gonna be some discussion uh, especially when you get to like starting hunches that's gonna be a big section where you're discussing a lot of things uh, and that's okay um, make sure you rein in the conversation a little bit as needed to keep you on track and to keep everybody focused. You want to try and keep the setup 
about to an hour. Um, you get into like an hour and 10, an hour and 15, it starts to feel, you know, pretty long, an hour and a half, and you're looking at the same amount of setup as your actual game itself, and that can be really tiring. So, um, so yeah, just do your best to keep everybody on, on track, and just make sure that the setup moves along quickly. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to take this like mess that we've created in Roll20 um, and get it all sorted and have it ready to play your next game. So I'll see you there.